Now, knowing that crystals are found in volcanoes is just another example of how crystals can be used to run the world. What I'm saying is that crystals do run the world and crystals can be used as a communication system. Okay, so the crystals that are inside of volcanoes can be used as an indicator for when the volcanoes are going to erupt. And although it's never really mentioned, growing up as a little weird child that I was, whenever my teachers used to say volcanoes, I used to think of, now I, as I'm older, I know I was thinking of plasma, but as I think about volcanoes, I just can't help but to always connect them with plasma and I wanted to see if they were connected. Okay, so still speaking about volcanoes, many of these crystals have concentric bands that look like tree rings, events like a new pulse of hot magma into the chamber, like that which can precede an eruption, can cause elements inside a crystal such as iron and magnesium to migrate toward the crystal's core or toward the edges creating new rings. Now, you see that it says magnesium and iron, like they're found inside of crystals. Now, the, the magnesium and iron and other different elements are also the same things that you see up in the firmament that make up what we call like Mercury or Mars, right? So depending on how close like Mercury or Mars get to you, they can activate the elements that make up the human body, right? So the, in, in this book that I'm reading, one second, let me show you. The Hidden Messages in Water by Mazuri Emoto. It talks about how negative emotions can be associated with elements found inside the human body. Now, if you want me to expand on this topic, I certainly will in another video. So if elements like nitrogen or iron can cause certain emotions in humans, then it can cause the same type of behavior in volcanoes. So, um, it's the the elements can be used to communicate when they form the crystal and they can communicate to you the behavior of a volcano like found in this article will a volcano erupt the answers in the crystals chemical patterns of tiny magma crystals track changes in volcanic activity so just how you can tell how a person is going to react based on the their connection to the elements or their, their frequency, the crystals inside of your body dictates the frequency that you are vibrating at. So the frequency of these volcanoes, and if they're going to erupt, can be told by the crystals inside. This highlighted section says, scientists can't monitor the moving and shaking of every volca volcano worldwide, but they can often collect the products of lesser eruptions, such as these deep form crystals to understand the volcano's behavior. Side note, in case you wanted to know from the USGS, what is the difference between magma and lava? Scientists use the term magma for molten rock that is underground and lava for molten rock that breaks through the Earth's surface. But I think it's deeper. I definitely believe that plasma plays a huge role here. And from Wikipedia, it just told you about magma. If you want to know more, just pause to read. But the last sentence says, besides molten rock, magma may also contain suspended crystals and gas bubbles. So is there ionization happening in volcanoes the same way that it happens in the sky? Hello? From another science article, the 2022 Tonga eruption created a very rare super plasma bubble in the ionosphere. See, that's a connection between volcanoes and plasma. And this article just goes on to tell you how the uh, volcano and the plasma bubble threw off GPS signals. Now, I believe that GPX signals are connected to the um, the propagation of the, the firmament, the radio frequency propagation that happens above us. And I this is another way of telling you that you don't need satellites because radio frequencies are propagated by our, our firmament. Volcanic lightning is an electrical discharge caused by a volcanic eruption rather than from an ordinary thunderstorm. Volcanic lightning arises from colliding, fragmenting particles of volcanic ash and sometimes ice. Are ice connected to crystals? Hello? Which generates static electricity within the volcanic plume, leading to the name Dirty Thunderstorm. What? 
Moist convection currents and ice formation also drive the eruption plume dynamics and can trigger volcanic lightning. Unlike ordinary thunderstorms, volcanic lightning can also occur before any ice crystals have formed in the ash cloud. Ice crystals from a volcano? And here are just some photos of lightning being emitted from volcanoes, which logically will let you know that plasma is associated with volcanoes and volcanoes can be erupted by electric convection, right? By like large plates underneath, giving it a charge to make it erupt. And they probably go off like timers. Now, in one of my lectures, I don't know which one right now, but um, I was telling you how this book heaven and earth by gabrielle henriette what in this book she was saying that um uh like comets and meteors they all go off like timers when um like a planet is at a certain degree like in a certain sign so like using astrology i believe the volcanoes work in the same way and what multiple volcanoes go off in the same time it can create something that we know as winter um, a crystal, Wikipedia, a crystal or crystalline solid is a solid material whose constituents such as atoms, molecules, or ions, like up above us in the firmament, anyway, are arranged in a highly ordered microscopic structure forming a crystal lattice that extends in all directions. In addition, macroscopic single crystals are usually identifiable by their geometric shape, consisting of flat faces with specific characteristic orientations. The word crystal derives from ancient Greek word crystallos, meaning both ice and rock crystals, icy cold. Now, of, listen, if crystals are found in volcanoes, right? And volcanoes, when they go off, they can set up a system to create ice ages. It's, it's no coincidence here that crystal is derived from crystallos, meaning ice or rock crystal. Here's something you probably didn't know. Examples of large crystals include snowflakes, diamonds, and table saw. Most inorganic solids are not crystals, but polycrystals, i.e. many microscopic crystals fused together into a single solid. Polycrystals include most metals, which buildings are made out of, rocks, ceramics, and ice. A third category of solids is amorphous solids where the atoms have no periodic structure. And these include wax, glass, and plastics, literally everything in our reality includes crystals. Now it is important to point out here, despite the name lead crystal, crystal glass, and related products are not crystals, but rather types of glass amorphous solids, which is still related back to crystals. What causes a volcano to erupt? Since I'm running out of time, I'm just going to read the last part here of the highlight area. The convection may be due to gravitational, electromagnetic, or fictitious body forces. I'm just going to stick here with the electromagnetic, meaning that you can use electromagnetic charges to make a volcano erupt. Now, going back real quick to the Tonga explosion was something I wanted to add. It was it was one of the largest explosions in modern history and impacted GPS across Australia and Southeast Asia. The eruption caused a super plasma bubble over in northern Australia that lasted for hours. I'm just going to try to fit this in from Britannica, ionosphere and magnetosphere talking about the firmament above us, you know, as above, so below. So if it's happening up in the sky, it's happening down below. And this is another reason why volcanoes erupt, which causes ice ages, ionosphere and magnetosphere regions of Earth's atmosphere in which the number of electrically charged particles, ions and electrons are large enough to affect the propagation of radio waves and radio frequencies are all around you. That's how messages are sent and received to your crystals right and this is how telepathy works this is how radio stations work televisions work you get the drift i'm going to read really fast photoionization most of the electrical activity in the ionosphere is produced by photoionization ionization caused by light energy everything is light when you take a photo is a photograph photons of short wavelengths that is of high frequency are absorbed by atmospheric gases pause to read the rest but essentially, this is connected to the Aurora Borealis. What are auroras and why do they come in different shapes and colors? Two experts explain. Oh, this is also important. Pause to read. This is telling you how the, the term ionosphere was created by radio engineers. 
The features of the magnetosphere are also described, particularly as they are manifested in the auroras in the Van Allen belts, which is essentially just our firmament above. And this is why the auroras happen around the two main poles, like the North Pole.